Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wayne's World of Science and Technology. Today, I want to take a look at Western equipment losses and donations to Ukraine. Actually, it should say donations and losses. Um, Russian disinformation claims they've destroyed everything sent by the West to Ukraine and will continue to do so. So, let's look at some evidence. Note that the following data was taken from Oryx, the open source intelligence site. I removed all Soviet, Russian, or Ukrainian designed systems and West systems based on them, leaving only systems from the West. Data was retrieved Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. And yes, this should have been done before I've had some system problems. Um, things look better than you've been told, but remember, the Russians started this with a huge stockpile of equipment, and Ukraine really does need more. This video has been in the planning for over a year. I've held off because I've been watching pro-Russian channels spinning the events so hard the poor bastards must be totally dizzy by now. Which makes this the time to drop this October surprise. Here's what Russia can prove they've destroyed. They've made claims of destroying 14 Challenger 2 tanks in a week in Kursk when the Ukrainians only had 12 in service. Yeah. Curiously, they are never able to provide photographic evidence. And yes, we ask. And boy, do we ask. And boy, do we ask. Uh, plus, they claim to shot down the entire Ukrainian Air Force uh, three times over. So, I mean, hey, you got to wonder about the reliability. So, let's look at how much equipment Russia can prove they've destroyed compared to donations and tell them, let's see if Ukraine is losing. This is part one. Okay, we've got the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the airplanes that, well, was supposedly one of Russia's red lines, but they've ignored that. What else is new? Um, six delivered, one lost, that means there's five in service. And you're saying five planes means nothing. Yeah, but the thing is that the planes the Ukrainians had were pretty clapped out, two and a half years of hard war. Those five planes are planes that aren't clapped out, and they also have newer sweat sensor systems. The Ukrainian planes were manufactured before 1991. Well, these are about the same age. They've been upgraded recently. So, they actually make a huge difference. And uh, there are more coming. As a matter of fact, I think total with uh, the Mirages, they'll be up to about 70 or 80 fast jets. Now, we've got an Airbus H-225 transport helicopter. One reported lost. Um, now, this is where it gets fun. None were ever reported delivered, so I have no idea how many were in service. It does say that Ukraine apparently ordered 21 for civilian use, but I don't know that this was a civilian play, uh, copter or whether it was one that had been donated for military use. You know, it could be anything. Westland Sea King, three delivered zero lost. So, there are still three Westland Sea Kings in service. Um, information, Ukraine ordered 21 for civil use. Uh, three were delivered through uh, military assistance. There we are. Went the wrong way for a second. The Bayraktar TB2, 35 plus delivered, 24 lost, probably 11 in service. Now we say probably because it's a 35 plus delivered. We don't know the actual number delivered. At least 35 were. We can prove that 24 have been lost. So there's some numbers to look at. Now we've got the Leopard 1A5. 80 delivered, 4 lost that we can prove. That means 76 in service, probably. And then, you know, Oh, and I should mention at this point that what I did was I took all anything that was uh, marked as damaged and assumed it was destroyed. So, if it said too damaged, I marked it down as four destroyed to make up for the fact that some stuff would not have gotten um, videoed or uh, had pictures taken of it. And also the fact that some of the stuff out there is going to be non-repairable. 
all be good for spare parts. So that helps take that into account. Leopard 2A4 and 2A6, 61 delivered, 34 lost, 27 in service. And before you say, why are they losing more of the newer tanks? The newer tanks are the ones that they're using at the front line. The older tanks are being used for rear, uh, from the rear more as I understand it. Now, that could be totally wrong, but I've been seeing lots of videos of the newer, the Leopard 2s, the Stritzwagens, the Abrams and the Challengers in places like Kursk, and I haven't seen any Leopard 1s in there. So, there is that to consider. Of course, the Leopard 1s aren't as capable, but they are still tanks. The Stritzwagen 122, uh, Swedish heavily modified Leopard 2. I put all the Leopards, Leopard 1s, and all the Leopard 2s together because it's really difficult to tell them apart. The only one that is so heavily modified you can tell is this one, the Stridgewagen. 10 delivered, 7 lost. Again, they've been using the more modern tanks heavily on the front line. Challenger 2, 14 delivered, 2 lost, probably 12 in service. M1, A1 Abrams, 31 delivered, 16 lost, 15 in service. By the way, there are Abrams and Challengers in Kursk. Fenix AFB, 9 delivered, 0 lost, 9 in service. The AMX 10 RC AFB, 40 delivered, 5 lost, 35 in service. That is a very nice piece of equipment. The FB 107 Scimitar, 23 delivered, 0 lost, 23 in service. VVS 10 Viking Amphibious Vehicle, 20 delivered, 0 lost, 20 in service. The Martyr 1A3, 140 delivered, 35 lost, 105 in service. M2A2 Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle, 304 delivered, 106 lost, 198 in service. And boy, have we seen some interesting videos showing the Bradleys. Those are really nifty machines fighting. CV-90 IFB, 50 delivered, 10 lost, 40 in service. KTO Rosmex IFB, 200 delivered, 7 lost, 193 in service. YPR-765 Armor Personnel Carrier, 264 delivered, 81 lost, 183 in service. Then the fun one, the M113 Armor Personnel Carrier. Yeah, it's old, it's a piece of junk, it's very thin-skinned, it's got crappy armor, but 1,542 were delivered to Ukraine, 180 are lost, which means 1,362 are still in service. These things are invaluable as taxis. I mean, they can, with the tracks, they can go nearly anywhere. They may not be well-armored, but man, can they go places. Then we've got the VAB APC something I'd never heard of before. 284 delivered, 29 lost, 255 in service. The FV-103 Spartan APC, 35 delivered, 17 lost, 18 in service. The Sisu XA-185 Patria, 20 delivered, 12 lost, 8 in service. The FV-104 Samaritan, 40 delivered, one lost, 39 in service. The FV-432 Bulldog, zero delivered. Isn't that interesting? But they managed to lose two. wonder where those came from. So, who knows how many are in service. The M1126 Striker, 189 delivered, 26 lost, 163 in service. BVS-10 Bandwagen Skydad. I hope I pronounced that correctly. 28 delivered, 2 lost, 26 in service. LAV 6.0 Super Bison, 39 delivered, 1 lost, 38 in service. Um, I will mention that all 39 are new production that just rolled off the production line. The production plant that builds these is only about uh, 5 kilometers from my house. The M4 
548 track cargo carrier. Zero delivered, supposedly, but they managed to lose one. Who knows where it came from? Maybe aliens. Uh, anyway, so who knows how many are in service? The BV206 Bundwagen, a different variation of it. 78 delivered, zero lost, 78 in service. Now, these I wouldn't expect to be frontline uh, units, but man, are they useful in the ba on the uh, back. Because they can go just about anywhere. The Vluk Light Armored Vehicle. 20 delivered, 0 lost, 20 in service. The M1117 Armored Security Vehicle. 400 delivered, 0 lost, 400 in service. The PVV302 Panzer Bahnwagen. 200 delivered, 0 lost, 200 in service. So, right now, it looks like Ukraine currently has, from donations, five fighter jets in service, three helicopters, 11 reconnaissance drones, 133 main battle tanks, 3,413 AFVs and IFVs. Now, again, it sounds like a lot, but Russia started this war with a hell of a lot more, and they've still got huge amounts of equipment sitting in storage, so Ukraine does need a lot more, and at some point, if people want, I can um, go ahead and give a list of what hasn't arrived, but you guys can find that out yourself by looking at orcs. Anyways, at this point I expect that every Ukrainian maintenance technician is going to need psychological help after the war. Working on so many different systems is probably driving them mad. But this equipment is making a difference. Anything Ukraine receives, new or used, hasn't been run like hell for three years of war. Think reliability. I mean, you, you got a tank that Ukraine started out the war with, and they're still running it? Two and a half years later? What do the engine? What's done to the transmission? So, this makes a huge difference. Another point is that Western designs tend to be slightly better protected. Now, I said tend to be. Um, some of them, like the M113 and the uh, Bundwagens, definitely aren't. They aren't designed to be protected the same way, but a lot of the other ones, especially the later ones, have way heavier armor. And this reduces casualties, which makes a huge difference because every person you lose who's a crewman of a vehicle is someone a trained person that you don't you know I mean that that's a real huge cost training someone to operate a vehicle properly and to handle all the controls to be the commander I mean it's not something you learn in a week anyways um, the sensors are also way newer than almost anything Ukraine has and I keep telling people sensors matter if you can see further than the enemy, you can hit them before they know you're there. And, I mean, you really need that capability. Anyways, that's the end of this for today. I just wanted to let you guys know where things are sitting, at least as of that date. Um, there is this part two coming. Part two will include a whole bunch more equipment. And you would really be surprised at what some of the equipment is. And uh, we'll talk about other things. In the meantime, happy Halloween. I'm going to uh, put on a robe and a uh, mask and imitate death. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.